Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. Balage Early Childhood Development Center welcomes a new playground. Parents receive skill support under the Youth Empowerment Project. And the Love St. Lucia campaign concludes an exciting component. For the second time in as many months, corporate citizen Rainforest Adventures, based in Babono, has not only contributed to the community, but invested in its future with the donation of another facility for toddlers. The management of Rainforest Adventures officially handed over a children's playground to the Lager Early Childhood Development Center. More from Homer DeMarc. The Lager Early Childhood Development Center has been gifted a new playground. The long-awaited project is the second donation of its kind by Rainforest Adventures in the community of Babuno and was facilitated by the Ministry of Education as well as the Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives and Parliamentary Representative for Babuno, Honorable Isakal Joseph. Principal at the Early Childhood Development Center, Junior Shasni, says the new facility will help develop the motor skills and self-esteem of students. We at the Lager JK are delighted to be recipients of this impressive facility. It's been a very long wait, and we know our kids will love it. From a bleak, damp, cold school ground, from having to play indoors, which sometimes cause difficulty, to a beautiful, green, well fenced, well drained playground. It is a heartwarming occasion for us. General Manager of Rainforest Adventures, Daryl Raymond, speaking on their contribution to the project, highlighted key considerations made in building the playground, including the creation of a green space through the planting of trees and flowers. I also want to say that while we have made this investment specifically for the school, we also believe that the wider community should be able to benefit and participate. So, we have had initial discussions with the principal to determine a modality where children from the wider community can use this space, particularly on the weekends. Of course, it would have to be done in a responsible way, ensuring close supervision and control, safety and security, and the following of the necessary COVID-19 protocols for sanitation. And as a company, we stand ready to assist you in finding that balance where the school can benefit as well as the community at large can benefit. District Education Officer Sarah Sipal showed immense appreciation to Rainforest Adventures for their contribution to the project and outlined the many benefits of learning through play. Early childhood education often focuses on learning through play. That is learning through play. Based on the research and philosophy of Jean Piaget, which posits, posits sorry, that play meets the physical, intellectual, language, and emotional and social needs of the children. Children's curiosity and imagination naturally evoke, listen to this, naturally evoke learning when unfettered. Listen to this, very interesting. Learning through play will allow a child to develop cognitively. Parliamentary representative for Babuno Honorable Isakal Joseph expressed his commitment to improving the learning environment for students in the community. We had the recognition program for students who perform well at the common entrance. That has been going on for, 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 for many years now. You know, we have given support to many schools as it pertains to improving the the infrastructure equipment, you know, um, paying salaries to, to um, assist with the implementation of programs at school. We have the after school program, we have the, the, the school, we, we employ at least three individuals, one to go around to look at the whole aspect of netball, football and cricket. And I must say that I'm really um, satisfied what we've seen happen with the netballers I'm under the leadership of, of um, Mrs. Mortut. Honorable Joseph said he hopes for future collaboration with Rainforest Adventures for the development of the community. From the Government Information Service, Hilma DeMarc reporting. The parenting program under the Youth Empowerment Project, YEP, Wednesday, 5th May 2021, began operation. 
The pilot is engaging 32 parents in the Castries region for a three-week period from the Wilton's Yard Human Resource Center and the City Hall. The program is intended as a source of support for parents and carers and offers an opportunity to share parenting experiences, develop a greater understanding of child development, build positive relationships and learn skills to deal with challenging behavior. For effective execution of this initiative, YEP is collaborating with the Division of Human Services. Beverly Ann Poyat is the Director of Human Services. The parenting program was initially conceptualized sometime in October 2020 when the Youth Empowerment Program Director, Coordinator, reached out to us at the Division of Human Services and we actually welcomed this opportunity because this is something that we at the division have been wanting to do for a very long time. And so with the assistance of the Youth Empowerment Project, we embarked upon putting this program together. We already had some resources in terms of our manuals. And so it was a matter of just um, getting this program off the ground. The YEP and the Division of Human Services fall under the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment. Permanent Secretary Velda Joseph looks forward to the successful rollout of the pilot program, consistent with overall efforts to strengthen social support offerings by the Ministry. We remain committed to building strong families and enhancing social resilience in the interest of the development of St. Lucia. It is my hope that this parenting program proves useful to all participants and that we will see many more such initiatives in the future. I listened to director and I am looking forward to those additional initiatives around the island as this becomes a national endeavor. After the three-week pilot phase, YEP intends to upgrade the parenting program to a national scale. The Love St. Lucia campaign has concluded an exciting component which drew participation from a wide cross-section of the population. The Ministry of Commerce, Industry, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, as part of activities for St. Lucia's 42nd Independence Anniversary, hosted a video competition. The video competition was held under the Ministry's Love St. Lucia campaign with a view of increasing consumer awareness and domestic market share of local products. Marketing specialist in the Ministry of Commerce, Cindy Eugene, highlighted the thrust behind the competition. The overarching vision of the Love St. Lucia campaign is to build resiliency in the St. Lucian economy by maximizing the potential of local industry, improving consumer awareness, and increasing domestic market share of our local manufacturers and service providers. Although COVID-19 has forced us to recognize the value of developing local industry, many are unaware of the variety of goods manufactured or services offered. Therefore, as part of the 42nd Independence Celebration, the Ministry of Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs hosted a video competition, a 42 second video competition dubbed Local Product Challenge. The competition ran from February 22 to May 5, 2021 and received some 28 submissions. As part of the competition dubbed Local Products Challenge, participants were required to create a 42 second video showcasing as many local products as possible, include the Love St. Lucia logo in the video and upload the video to the ministry's Facebook and tag Love St. Lucia and Commerce St. Lucia. Public Relations Officer for Export St. Lucia and Panel Judge for the competition, Jason Darius, indicated that individuals were judged based on six categories with a maximum allocation of 20 points each, totaling 120 points on the tally sheet. Number four, technical quality. This is where we looked at the overall quality of the submission for both video and audio, noting the effort and attention to detail and if the message is communicated effectively. Number five, the link to the theme. It was a local products challenge. So we had to allocate points to 
as to how St. Lucian the overall production was. And uh, lastly, we had creativity and originality. We were looking for something extraordinary, something that really stood out from the rest. So each of these categories will score out of 20 points, making a perfect score of 120 points on the judges' tally sheet. Literally no one got a perfect score with our judges being so scrutinous and meticulous with their, with their approach, sorry. So when it was all said and done and the scores had to be counted, we still came very close to a tie for first place with just one point separating the winner and the runner-up. The People's Choice Award went to Shanna Joseph. Put Selector P. Prosper came in third with 301 points, winning a $500 cash prize. Lenny Hunt came in second with 322 points, winning $1,000. And Gail Charles secured first place with 323 points, winning $3,000 in cash. The Ministry of Commerce is confident that with continuous sensitization activities, consumers will pivot their purchasing options towards domestic consumption. Chairman of the COVID-19 Command Center and Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, revealed that over 100 frontline workers are part of the COVID-19 infection toll in St. Lucia. While endorsing the state of emergency extension in the sitting of House of Assembly, Honorable Fede emphasized the importance of eliminating as many threats to the national health and security systems during the pandemic. When your frontliners are being affected, Mr. Speaker, you have to take the extra precaution to make sure that the people whom you're asking to protect the population are also at risk. And so this is not a time, Mr. Speaker, where things are normal. And so what we have to do is to make sure that we secure the country, we secure the health system, we secure the police and the enforcement system, so that we can have the best capacity to be able to manage this pandemic. And so, Mr. Speaker, um, so about 128 uh, frontliners have been affected to date with COVID-19. They include nurses and doctors and, and other uh, medical practitioners, including pharmacists and health personnel, Mr. Speaker. The command center chair reinforced that the state of emergency as experienced on Ireland in the past year has not been oppressive but has been effectively utilized as a proactive measure. We have seen, Mr. Speaker, that where there have been a curfew as recently as Easter, we see, Mr. Speaker, that we're able to manage the pandemic well. The job and the work of the police becomes a lot easier. It is with more clarity. It becomes a lot easier for people to comply, Mr. Speaker, to the protocols. As well, Mr. Speaker, we've had several months of this um, the state of emergency during the course of the pandemic. People have been able to go to the supermarket. People have been able to go to the beach. People have been able to go pay their bills. People have been able to go see their families. People have been able to go to church. And, and, and the list of liberties, Mr. Speaker, is long. And so I reject those suggestions that we're trying to restrict those um, liberties. Parliament has approved the extension of the state of emergency ending October 16, 2021. Meanwhile, over the week, more than 36,000 people have died from COVID-19-related complications. Nearly 40% of all global COVID deaths reported last week took place in this region of the Americas. More Latin American countries than ever before are reporting over 1,000 COVID cases a day. Director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne, says hospitals are fuller than ever. A sad reminder that we are still in the midst of ongoing crisis. Canada is continuing to report significant jumps in infections in highly populated provinces as Ontario, as well as in less populated territories of the North and Yukon, which are home to remote and indigenous communities. Puerto Rico and Cuba remain significant drivers of COVID cases in the Caribbean. Although infections are also on the rise in many smaller islands. Anguilla, for example, has reported nearly 70% of its total COVID cases in just the last 10 days. 
And in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, cases are increasing among internally displaced people following the recent eruption of the La Sufre volcano. In Central America, Guatemala is seeing significant spikes in cases and Costa Rica is reporting record high infections. Across both countries, hospitals are full of patients, most of them under 70 years of age. Cases are rapidly accelerating in the Guyanas and across Argentina and Colombia, where weekly case accounts are five times higher than they were this time last year. Hospitals are reaching capacity in Colombia's metropolitan cities and death rates have jumped by more than a quarter over the last week. Dr. Etienne says despite all that has been learned about this virus in a year, the control efforts are not as strict and prevention is not as efficient. And we are seeing what happens when these measures are relaxed. COVID spreads, cases mount, our health systems become overwhelmed and people die. The PAHO director urges all to practice social distancing, wearing masks, and avoiding gatherings in closed spaces, as doing so is the key to reducing transmission, especially as dangerous variants of concern circulate in the region. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to satisfaction of basic needs. This means that every consumer has the right to basic goods and services that guarantee survival. This right includes adequate food, clothing, shelter, healthcare, education, water, and sanitation. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle a Creole. Monsieur Ta Janelle, Monsieur Madame Department, qui nous responsabilité pour information à gouvernement cette ici, ça c'est GIS et Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, qui présente Nouvelle a Creole. Présente au Primus Hutchinson. Travail pour bâtir un point neuf à la commune de Kuldesak, qui a commencé avec le projet Salah qui a fait pour renforcer la capacité de pont et l'autre construction qu'on a pour plus reliable et plus fort que ce qui était existé avant. Le projet pour bâtir le pont neuf Salah crée aussi l'occasion de plus de travail et aussi pour suivre et pour la vitesse économique de ceci. Ça a fait et puis une grande assistance financière en hauteur de 37 millions de dollars au gouvernement Japon. Le pont neuf là finit à col de sac et qui a réduit autant à ce quantité le pont ne peut rester fermé à résultat de gros de et mauvais désastres. Le pont neuf ça là a stabilisé la longue transportation parce que le pont est plus long et plus large. Le pont neuf là aussi a fait possible pour réduire à ce gros de à ces communes qui ont eu comme Besson, Goodlands et ceci. À part de ça, il a supposé renforcer des goûts la vie sociale et économique. C'est comme ça là. Et il a une cause pour un chemin plus résilient contre les désastres naturels. Pour neuf salaires, il de sac qui par les gros professionnels et aussi qui a bâti un bâillon haut degré international. En même temps, le département des affaires de construction et travaux n'a pas responsabilité pour que tout le travail là, à ce projet ça là, marche comme doit être. Il y a un grand sermon qui est pour le semaine qui passe pour te marcher terrain côté construction pour neuf salas qui a pris coup et de un tas de la tenir plusieurs adresses. Par exemple, les officiers et qui a parmi eux c'était le ministre des Affaires construction et travaux, Honorable Stevenson King, ministre des Affaires développement économique et représentatif pour un parlement, qui a parlement pour passer de sud-est de Castro, Honorable Guy Joseph et représentatif pour le gouvernement Japon. Le gouvernement s'est laissé car oui, mais c'est le gouvernement et le peuple en pays Japon pour continuer à supporter l'avancement et le développement en pays s'est laissé et principalement pour l'assistance financière pour bâtir le gouvernement pour 9 salaires à cause de ça. 
Premier ministre cette ci Honorable Allen Chasney, qui voyage pour l'Amérique pour assister plusieurs discussions avec un parmi eux. C'était un spécial à compte et puis les Grecs à l'industrie touristique en Floride. Quand cette ci avec l'autre pays à Caraïbes Black a préparé pour l'industrie bateau touristique virée en opération en mois de juillet, Premier ministre Chasney, qui est un ancien des grands chefs, responsable pour l'idée affaires touristiques en pays Caricom, chaque après des marches, en préparation pour la saison nouveau touristique, ça là. Parmi ces discussions, le Premier ministre Chasney a discuté le développement de la Wat Nef pour Vieux-Fort, pour le service Go Bateau Touristique. Le Premier ministre Chasney a déjà retourné à cette ci et présentement en quarantaine pour 14 jours, car ce protocole qui est en place contre la maladie Corona. Du moins, le Premier ministre de l'autre la pays, le ministre qui nous responsabilité pour affaires agricoles, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, s'est tiré position contre le Premier ministre. La conservation nationale, le CETLC, a supporté un projet qui est financé par une agence de touristique, ça a créé TIF, projet à a trouvé implémenté par l'organisation Les Nagers à CETLC, ça a été en bas de projet ça a c'est pour une année, et supposé bâtir la capacité Les Nagers à CETLC pour entretenir Jardin Coral à bas la mer et nager à service Cuba. Le travail ça a aussi adressé de manière pour ouvrir et bâtir Coral à cette place. Dans la messe ici, pour que ça l'a aussi bâti capacité, les nagers, et principalement les jeunesses, pour trouver étonnement en façon pour nager, ex scuba, et étonnement ça l'a à adégué certificat qui a placé ses participants capabilité pour assister si un cas y en secours à la mer. Étonnement ça l'a été commencé le 3 à mois de mars 2021, côté, si, côté 10 participants qui participait à la compétition nager et plusieurs autres affaires de nager à Pigeon Island. Sanders Resort a pour tuer équipement et bateau pour ses participants et expérimenter l'exercice de la. Ses participants ont appris plusieurs autres sujets qui ne pouvaient faire des services marins et c'était ça a été coup en diverses places à la mer au Liban cette fois-ci. Et c'est comme ça nous avons une nouvelle là. Je remercie l'auteur pour regarder. Je vous remercie l'invitation pour que vous vous dire comment ça fait la vie. Je vais vous donner une autre nouvelle à quoi vous avez besoin. Vous pour Chanel. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.